Welcome everybody to Imagination TV and today we're looking at trust and we've got a very special guest joining us to deliver the keynote. Nancy Conrad's going to be delivering that in, in just a little while and we also have Lisa Mitchell who's going to be finishing up the show today because it's going to be a long weekend uh, tomorrow in Australia so we're going to have Friday and Monday off the show and then we'll be swinging back uh, as strongly as we can on Tuesday. So we're working as hard as we can, a quick update on what's been happening with Imagination TV we're in conversations with the Australian government. We're talking to a number of governments around the world. We're talking to universities in South Africa and a number of our university partners around the world about how we can work on broadcasting this out to make sure that every single kid gets a mentor in their life every single day during these tough times of COVID-19. And that is still our priority and something we're, we're really working as hard as we can on. So anyone that can work with us on distributing this show, being a production partner, ensuring that when schools are shut down, which many are now shut down around the world, and parents are being asked to multiply their skill set to be both an employee at home and now a homeschool teacher, and teachers are trying to work out how to be able to teach kids through technology that I've never used before, know that AIM can play a role and we can support that ecosystem by putting a mentor into that slot and, and giving teachers and kids and parents a break for one hour a day. And we're also at the same time working with some curriculum development groups. So we're working with an Australian group to develop curriculum for teachers that can run alongside the show and talking to a couple of organisations around the world about having curriculum sitting alongside the show as well. So that's what we're working on. The other news is yesterday we launched This Hoodie Pays Rent. So I'm wearing it right now and we're looking at the challenges facing uh, people who have been affected by COVID-19 and lost their jobs, made a lot of casual staff and a lot of people who can't now have income to be able to keep a roof over their head. Over 2 million Australians are set to be affected by it. Close to 20 odd million people around the world are having challenges with their housing and how they pay rent. So we've created this hoodie, which on the front will pay rent and on the back will mentor kids. 50% of all the proceeds will go to registered hoodie connectors who have applied at aimmentoring.com to be able to get $30 each from every single hoodie that they sell onto their friends, family and networks to be able to help them pay rent. So yesterday, we had $10,000 worth of hoodies that were sold um, during and just after the show. And big thanks to Pedestrian TV for helping spread the word as well. And we're looking to share the word far and wide. So if you have an organisation that you work with, seriously, the simplest thing we can do together is just throw uh, an example of how people can be involved in this with an image of this hoodie pays rent for both people to be able to buy a hoodie and then for hoodie connectors around the world to apply. And I'll just pause you in this moment because we had a beautiful moment yesterday where one of our guests was talking about how they started their organization and they said they'd watched a film and they couldn't believe that the story of human trafficking was real and then instead of moving on they stopped and they acted every single one of you watching this show right now can stop and act you've got to know somebody who's being affected and had their rent affected right now you've got to know three five ten people and the travesty is what happens when we don't stop and act 
when we just go, oh, that's really powerful or something, you know, we should try and change something around that. Oh, that sucks for those two million people. Those two million people are your cousin's cousin and your cousin's friend and your auntie's friend and your uncle's friend and your mum's uh, lost niece. Everybody that we can find and connect to, if we don't get visibly out there proactively, then we don't find solutions. We just sit there and expect somebody else to do it, which is called the bystander effect. So my challenge to you would be don't be a bystander in this moment. Let's get out there and help people pay their rent and be a part of the solution. Today, I'm really, really excited to be able to, to get into our keynote and we're just gonna play a quick video on um, this hoodie pays rent to give you a sense of what it's all about. And we'll also uh, post the link of the video in the YouTube chat room. And if you head to aimmentoring.com right now, you can grab a This Hoodie Pays Rent hoodie and help us support people to pay their rent in Australia and all around the world. Here comes the video. Cancel, not cancel, and, and being a part of this experience on Imagination TV. Oh, it's pretty awesome. You're in Australia, and I'm in the United States in Washington, D.C., and we are one world. It's really exciting to be together with you virtually. Well, thank you, Nancy. I can't wait to hear your story. The stage is yours. Go get them, and, and just letting you know from the chat line, throw in any questions, and we'll ask Nancy at the end of our keynote once we get through there. Throw your comments in, grab a hoodie at aimmentoring.com to support this hoodie pays rent and let's do this thing together. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing for the special keynote on Trust this week, Nancy Conrad. I have been working my whole life, really, in transforming the way kids learn. The Conrad Challenge gives students this amazing ability to show their stuff. To me, it's like science fair meets Shark Tank. But it's not just that the kids are solving a problem, it's that they're having to learn how to communicate it and explain it to others and then how to market it. SAFE utilizes sound waves to extinguish wildfires. These kids are 16, 17 years old and they've come out with ideas that are world breakers. There's nothing in the world like the Conrad Challenge. The reason I say that is because the emphasis in the Conrad Challenge is on the curiosity piece. The emphasis in the Conrad Challenge is about preparing you for being in a mindset to create. This is so exciting and I just can't wait to see where we take this. Yeah. We say that we engineer beyond imagination, but actually the Conrad Challenge is beyond imagination. Beyond imagination, wow, what a compliment. I mean, it just excites me every time I hear that from these young people. And I have to say that the innovations of our students that they created year is what's really beyond imagination. So last May, uh, it was the 50th anniversary of the lunar landing. It's still the 50th anniversary, and actually the 50th anniversary of the moon landing will lead us into Earth Day because it's the moon landings that led to the creation of Earth Day. So last May, we, the Conrad Foundation, we created a moonwalker capsule. So all the students who participated in our Conrad Challenge were included in the capsule. What does that mean? It was their names, their product ideas, their photos. It all went to space in a memory disk on a Blue Origin flight. Their ideas actually left this planet and went to space. Now that's cool. So here are some of the product ideas that went to space. And while they're awesome and cool, they weren't developed by scientists, doctors, or engineers. 
They were created by our young, innovative Conrad Challenge high school students who are 13 to 18 years old. Here's an example. A tool to improve storage efficiency inside the International Space Station. A low cost portable water filtration system to serve populations after natural disasters. A line of skincare products made from tobacco. A rehabilitative medical device to improve joint health. A meal replacement energy bar meeting all of the nutritional needs of NASA astronauts. And a device to diagnose eye disease. These is really learning without limitations. The Conrad Challenge is the flagship program of the Conrad Foundation. And the foundation is built on the rich legacy of my late husband, Pete. Of the nearly 8 billion people living on this planet, only 12 have seen Earth from the surface of the moon. Without exception, all who have walked on the moon have commented that Earth looks like a beautiful blue and white marble suspended in a black velvet sky. And all of them have said there are no borders and there are no boundaries. We create those. And now we're learning to live without borders and boundaries. The world has come together. 50 years ago, my late husband, Pete Conrad, was the third man to walk on the moon. In 1969, Pete and his two best friends strapped in for their ultimate adventure, a launch aboard a Saturn V rocket for their journey to their landing site, which was called the Ocean of Storms. The adventure was scary. It was exciting. It took tremendous interdependence, trust, dedication, courage, bravery, and it required discipline, training, resilience, and passion. It was the intersection of exponential technology and the most daring and extraordinary adventure humanity had ever dared to dream. So you might wonder, how did Pete get his moonshot? And how might his story relate to your own moonshot? Pete grew up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and he attended a prestigious private school, but he had difficulty reading and spelling and he was failing several classes. In those days, they labeled him as stupid. Now they diagnose it as dyslexia. Pete was expelled from this school in the 11th grade and his mom found another school in New York with an excellent reputation for dealing with problem kids, and Pete was a so-called problem child. He had to repeat the 11th grade, and when he got there, the headmaster of the school saw something very special in Pete, and they took him under his wing, and Pete ended up with a scholarship to Princeton. He became an aeronautical engineer, which was perfect for him. He loved to fly, and he didn't have to read or spell. Engineers don't have to read or spell very much. Pete went on to become a test pilot and then became an astronaut. He flew four flights in space and while he loved going to the moon with his two best friends, his favorite mission was Skylab, which was our first space station. And as you probably know, International Space Station is over space right now. And by the way, one of the tracking stations for the lunar missions was in Australia and uh, became very much a part of the, of the moon programs. So Skylab was launched first, and then they sent a manned crew up to follow it and rendezvous with the lab. And when they launched the lab, it was damaged. One of the solar arrays didn't open. Think of an array as just a great big, huge fan, and the array was there to shield the lab from the intense heat of the sun. But there was this copper strap that had tied it together at launch, and when it uh, got into space, the, the copper strap was stuck and the array didn't open, so the fan didn't open and the lab was cooking and it was stuck. And so it fell on Pete's crew to rescue the lab. And Pete did an EVA, which is an extra vehicular activity in space, 270 miles from earth. And he was tied to a tether that his crewmates were holding onto dearly inside of the space vehicle. And he was hanging out in space, yanking on this copper strap to get the array to open so that the lab wouldn't be cooking anymore. And so the array opened and Pete flew backwards in space. And he thought, oh man, if that tether doesn't hold and my crewmates can't hold on to it, 
I'm going to be the first arrow ever launched in space. I think that's a great example of trust. And by the way, for his rescue of Skylab, which that was how he rescued it, he was awarded a Congressional Space Medal of Honor. That's not too bad for a kid who was expelled from school. Pete retired from the Navy and NASA, and he went to work at a company called McDonnell Douglas. It's now Boeing. And in the early 90s, he was at the helm of the DCX, an experimental single stage to orbit vehicle. And that vehicle became the foundation for the privatization and commercialization of space. From his experience with the DCX, Pete formed four companies with the ultimate goal of using space for quick and easy transportation from California to Australia in 45 minutes. Not a bad deal, right? So what Branson, Musk, and Bezos are doing today in space actually stands on the shoulders of Pete Conrad. In 1999, Pete was killed in an accident near Ojai, California. It's really strange. Ojai is the Native American word for moon. An educator took a young man under his wing and that young man got a moonshot. And as I've said, what we do at the Conrad Foundation and our Conrad Challenge gives our students their moonshot. Pete's story is an inspiring example of success at the intersection of STEM education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Through our work at the Conrad Foundation, his legacy has now reached thousands of students from all over the world. The work of the foundation represents the merger of my passion to transform education and Pete's story. Unlike Pete, I am not an expert in STEM fields. I'm not a geek. My degrees are in philosophy and have a master's in English. But like Pete, I am a systems thinker and I am a teacher. When I was young, there were only three opportunities for women in the workplace. You could be a secretary, a nurse, or an educator. I love teaching, and my passion for education has continued to this very day. I am dedicated to transforming young lives through experiential and practical learning, because I believe today's youth need to go beyond learning facts and figures and learn how to learn and how to think. Our annual innovation competition, the Conrad Challenge, provides the bridge between knowing something and being able to do something with that knowledge. Once you learn this, I have no doubt you will be inspired to accomplish more than you ever thought possible. The Conrad Challenge is dedicated to enriching the educational experience of young people, you, and to inspiring their curiosity, their STEM skills, their imagination, the ability to be an integral part of designing the future. We are dedicated to developing a gender, cultural, and racially diverse innovative workforce. Our students come from multiple countries such as Africa, India, China, New Zealand, Australia, and Canada, and we are proud to say that 50% of our students who are invited to our Innovation Summit are women. That's our finals, by the way, which we normally host at Kennedy Space Center. And this year, we're going to do it virtually. Everything's going virtually this year. Our students work in four primary categories, and they create commercially viable products to solve global and local challenges. Those categories are aerospace, energy and environment, cybersecurity and technology, health and nutrition. We're also privileged to work with the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World, and we invite our students to create systems and technologies to prevent vaping among teens, as well as to help farmers who are no longer growing tobacco. We are also cooperating with smart technologies by challenging our students to transform the classroom with new technologies. Talk about being plugged in to the true challenges of today. We're doing it. You know, fundamentally, we've been taught that there are two ways of thinking. There's in the box and there's out of the box. So our students not only learn to think outside of the box, there simply is no box. We don't say make this and if you make it better, you win. We unleash the potential of students to solve the world's most difficult challenges. And not only is there no box, they own their ideas. 
Many go on to patent and to deploy their product ideas. Conrad innovators not only participate in social impact, they lead the charge as they solve global and local challenges. They are in fact designing the future. And by the way, some of them are now creating masks for people to wear during this uh, pandemic. So winning our competition is actually just the beginning. Many of our students have been invited to the White House. Some of them have spoken with me at TED Talks. And recently, one of our students was invited to speak at the opening of a conference in front of 800 attendees on the floor of the United Nations. What an opportunity, huh? So this young man is from Nigeria, and he participated in the Foundation for a Smoke-Free World category. He and his team of four other students created a system for farmers in Africa to monitor their crops and a banking system for them to be paid promptly. This is a big problem in Africa. The farmers uh, harvest their tobacco, they take it into the cities, and many of them have to wait for several months and sometimes longer to get their uh, money for their crops. It just takes a really long time. So this was a tremendous development for the farmers in Africa. So this young man's speech began with the following sentence. He said, I was a prisoner. All the air went out of the room. And then he said, I was a prisoner of my own mind. He said, I didn't think I could do things. And then I found the Conrad challenge and no box thinking. And now I know I can do anything I set my mind to. That's true of all of our students. And it's true of all young people who simply set their minds to doing things and having faith and trust in their own power to do things and to learn. Our students have original ideas that have value and they are encouraged by working with teachers, developing peer-to-peer -peer relationships with them, as well as relationships with subject matter experts and judges from government, industry, and academia, including the CIA, NASA, CDC, Patel, and even the co-founder of Are You Ready? Match.com. Normally, finalists in our competition, as I said, are invited to attend our Innovation Summit, which we host at Kennedy Space Center at their visitors complex. So kind of think Shark Tank meets the Academy Awards, this time for students. At Summit, our students present in real time in front of judges. They learn how to communicate, they learn how to be vulnerable, to trust each other, to be brave, and to connect with other students from around the world. This year, due to the coronavirus, our Innovation Summit will be held virtually. I personally can't wait to see our student teams in action. It's going to be a real interesting adventure. And our team has been asked to do what our students do. We have been asked to be innovative and think with no box. And so it'll be really fascinating to see how this turns out. So I hope you will consider joining us next year for our 2021 Conrad Challenge. You can form your team today. There's two to five in a team and spend time analyzing problems that impact your community and other communities. And join us in August as we launch our new competition. I promise you, you won't regret embarking on this journey with us. It's quite an adventure. As a result of students just like you joining us, we've created a community of young innovators and entrepreneurs who become part of our Conrad family and they participate in our Alumni Leadership Council. We're so proud of our work. We're 14 years old and we've reached thousands of students worldwide. You know, the Earth peak saw from the moon 50 years ago has changed radically. Thankfully, in this time of isolation from each other, the internet can connect all of us. We're now just a click away from each other. We are a global community and we are being invited to open our minds to seeing the world as the astronauts did, a world without borders and without boundaries. We have expanded opportunities, not only in terms of gender, but also race and culture. And we are now interdependent on each other for our very survival. We are in an era of radical change that is transforming the way our world works. Your next adventure will require the skills you've learned in and out of school. 
It will require the same systems thinking, discipline and resilience and daring that it took for Pete to go to the moon. And just as Pete flew aboard Apollo 12 with his best friends, so you will journey forward with the embrace of your global community, a community that has now become virtual. As you embark on your moonshot, your journey will be influenced by your unique ability to truly understand the impact of international collaboration in ways never before thought possible. Today, our very lives depend on each other and our lives depend on our trust of each other. We know the world needs ideas and we need solvers and we need leaders. We encourage you to become a student of life and to conceive, believe and achieve the breakthrough ideas, technologies, and sustainable solutions that will influence and determine the future and well being of our planet, and yes, our very survival. We invite you to expand on your experiences and to use science, technology, engineering, math, music, and art to create solutions to the complex global and local challenges of this century. Let's work together as we seek new crew members for our next bridge, Moonshot, Sustaining Spaceship Earth. Thank you. Nancy, that was amazing. What a journey you've been on and oh, I just think everything that you believe in is what we're trying to work to, to as well. It's just, it's about unboxing minds, freedom of the mind. And as you were talking through, I was just nodding and nodding and people on the chat line, they'd be nodding too. Let's see who, what they've said. Wow, we had Standby Empire say, fascinating. We had Kat Pirelli say, you are so amazing, Nancy. Thanks for believing in these kids and giving them a platform to share their ideas. So inspirational. We had Perul say, there is no box. Love the way you think, Nancy. Vanessa said, whoa. So fantastic to have Nancy give her insight and time to us. I hope all the girls around the world get inspired. STEM is cool. Go girls. Hey, Nancy, you know how you've just given this like really hectic speech about really complex stuff? How did you get your mind to this place where you could understand all these big concepts? <laughs> well, as I mentioned to you, I'm a systems thinker and um, I tend to think about how I form ecosystems. How can we all work together as collaborators? You know, when I created this, um, I, I thought, well, what's the best business plan I've ever seen? Because we were combining innovation, education, and entrepreneurship. That's asking for a business plan. So what's the best business plan? Well, in my mind, it was how we got to the moon. How did we do that? It was leadership. That's me. Funding that used to be me. I don't do that anymore. It outgrew me way too fast. And it was government, industry, and academia. And 400,000 people worked together. Collaboration. And so that's how we modeled our system for our education platform. With that same business model is how we got to the moon. And it's intersecting with people like you guys and people and young people all over the world who work with us and collaborate with us and that's what makes it so special hey hey nancy i won't keep you too long but i want to know one more thing when you when you pick a business plan as big as going to the moon and then you say oh yeah i'm the leader do you have any doubt <laughs> you can't have any doubt when you're a leader if you doubt yourself you, you know there are doubt times i do doubt and i think why did i dream up all these crazy things but you have to have confidence in what you're doing. Um, and you have to just keep pressing on. My husband used to always say, press on. So I always just press on. And, you know, in the space program, you know, in entrepreneurship, well, in the space program, failure is not an option, but in entrepreneurship, it's mandatory. So, yeah, I make some mistakes and um, I have failed. and. Everything fails every now and then, but you keep moving and keep pressing on. And the, the people that work with us, all the judges and subject matter experts that are part of our program, work with us on the backside of our uh, platform, on our internet. Everything is done on the internet. It's all virtual. 
we've been living in a virtual world for 14 years. Now everybody's with us, which is great. Um, so it's, it's a difficult competition. It's really fun. It's very high impact. These, these solutions that these kids make, make a big difference and they are impacting the future. They end up in university. Um, they stay together. Our alumni association is huge. It's all over the world. And, and as I said, when I spoke with you, it's a family of young innovators and entrepreneurs. So we very much pride ourselves in being very intimate and, and uh, assist, continue our association with all of our students. Well, and they all become Conrad innovators, by the way. I, I just wanted to say thank, thank you for, for being one of those people who gets it done. And it, who battles those doubts and just says, yeah, I'm going to lead and I'm going to lead in a big way. And without people like you, Nancy, we, we don't make progress. And, and like what your husband did, it inspires us all to, to push further and keep going. And thank you for everything you've done with your life. And I'm going to have a chat to Jack and the AIM team because we have an imagination ambassadorship program where we set a 100-day challenge for the kids to create a fairer world at all our high schools, and we pick one of them. And there could be a way that we could dovetail that together nicely and just keep, keep pushing kids to create change like you, you've been doing. And thank you That'd for everything awesome. you've been doing. That'd be super cool. We would love that. Okay, well, maybe Parul and, and, and then Lauren and all of the really cool people will talk and we'll do some wonderful stuff. Hey, okay. thanks so much, Nancy. You've been fantastic today. Congratulations uh, on everything and all power to you. And let's take our next moonshot, planet Earth. Let's go. We'll do it together. We'll do it together. Thank, Thank you very much. Okay. Bye. Bye. Wow. What a star. What an amazing star. What an amazing story. And I love the fact that you just go and do it, you know. That story about Pete as well, getting expelled from school. I've been expelled from 17 high schools. Now I'm on TV. <laughs> hey, we got Lisa. Lisa, are you here? Can you hear me? Hello. Yeah, got ya, got ya. Yay. Lisa, thanks so much for joining us today. Tell us a bit about your story. My story, well, um, when I was about 16 or 17, I ended up on a TV show singing somehow. And I grew up in Albury um, on Wiradjuri country on the, on the river, Murray River or Bangala. And I just always wrote music and, and, and sang songs. And, um, and now, yeah, it's, it's quite a long time later and I'm still doing it. So it's, it's what I love. Brilliant. Well, because we don't have our artist segment tomorrow, we get to have the very, very special and talented Lisa Mitchell singing a song for us today. Lisa, over to you. Thanks so much for joining us on Imagination TV. And I think Jack might come back to close the show up. So I've been Panger. Go to aimmentoring.com and just stop. Act. Let's get some people, some rent paid, ladies and gentlemen. This is a crisis. Let's go together. Okay, sorry. Um, I get a bit excited and a bit focused. Lisa Mitchell, over to you. Thank you. Okay, um, so this is a song um, definitely about trust. Uh, it's about surrendering to love. I'm still scared. What I truly want But then you come along With those eyes that don't Look away And those hands that sing And say It's already done
the mother in me. I hear her return. She's been waiting for you. And I know you see her. Her star Thank you. Thanks for taking us into your world and, and, and letting us all come together. The, the chat rooms, um, yeah, lots of people on there saying beautiful things. Tiana Larkin saying such a calming voice, could listen to Lisa all day. Penny saying so harmonious. Um, beautiful Lisa from Atlanta Lloyd. And yeah, thank you for sharing your music with us and for giving us all the reason to, to think about trust and, and come together during these really complex times. So thanks for joining us on the show. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Oh, good. Take care. All right, team, that wraps up Imagination TV for the week of trust. I just have to text um, a couple of crew working on the show being like, is this week two or week three? It has been a gnarly three weeks as we've pulled together a live television show daily um, from nothing. We created in five days and we wanted to be one of those groups that walks the talk that when we, when we face difficult times that we try and find solutions and you will hear a running theme if you go back through all the shows. A lot of our people who have, who have come on as guests keep saying that part of the solution is you just keep going. Dr. Phil said you take one step forward and you just feel better. He spoke about that on Monday. We've had people say progress and hope is interlinked with action like Daisy Jeffrey and Stan Grant reflecting on the show. We've had Jonathan Zawada talk about those doubters that come to you in your life that, that challenge you and make you feel like an imposter and he's one of the world's top designers. All of us are suffering from doubt and I love what Nancy said today, which was you can't let it creep in. There's times in our lives when, when we can let doubt wash over us, when we can get it, we can get down, we can find our ways to deal with all of the struggles that are coming to us and I believe that in times of crisis, that is time to get up and to go. When you have really difficult scenarios, often all you can lean on is relentless hope and trying to push through as, as strongly as you can to find progress. Get up every single day and keep stepping forward. So we'll be back with the show on Tuesday after this Easter break. I want to thank everyone for being a part of it. Hopefully we'll have a partnership we can announce with the Australian government that's going to see this getting out to every school around the world, around Australia, sorry. And then, of course, Australian government will be able to get it around the world, Jack. Good one. Uh, and then we'll be hopefully doing everything we can to, to continue to deliver on this promise to get to those 1.37 billion kids. Because just like Nancy, we believe the best business plan in the world is going to the moon. And when you work with AIM, you're going to see us shoot for the moon every single time because even if we miss, we'll land amongst the stars. And with that, I'd like to leave you with a challenge. Let's try and see if we can raise $2 million from this what he pays rent. 
So a million dollars can go to people that are struggling in their homes right now to keep a roof over their head all around the world. And a million dollars can go to help us get this TV show out there to 1.37 billion kids and get a mentor in the home every single day. Thank you for joining us. Trust is about action. And this week's been about action. And it's been an honor to have everyone come together. Have a wonderful break for those of you that are having a so long weekend. And for the rest of you, we'll see you on the other side on Tuesday uh, for our next live show next week as we come back with a, with a really great group of people. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Look after yourselves. Oh, my God.